going. <laughs> I should really start scripting my intros, huh? Yeah. Anyway, what? Since you uploaded what's that? a video, what? Still what? What? Oh, live? Sassy. Like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah. We'll what? Talk what? About what? Hi. Someday. Um, no, nope. <laughs> no, we thought call? you were dead. But it's fine because I'm here now. <laughs> uh, the video that you are all about to see or in the process of seeing that I felt a need to record an intro for is um, it's an essay that I did. It's an illustrated essay, which is strange, but it's cool. Um, basically, I am writing about sort of like surprise and suspense and their use in literature versus like their use that you might see in sort of film or TV or stuff like that. So that is what you're going to see. I drew a bunch of beautiful drawings to go along with it. You're going to see a little tiny avatar of myself going the entire time, no mouth, because I don't draw mouths for some reason. Um, <laughs> so yes, you're going to see that. And that's gonna represent me talking, so that's cool. <laughs> um, you'll notice the um, camera and the audio is a little bit different, not as great, um, but a lot easier to work with, so yeah. Um, what else is there to say? Probably just enjoy this video, it's about writing. Oh, 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 important things. This video includes spoilers for these books. Rebecca by someone, Daphne du Maurier. Um, excellent book. Please, if you plan on reading that book, do not watch this video. One of the points that I make in my essay is that there's no such thing as spoilers. I lie. <laughs> there is such a thing as spoilers, so please... Rebecca, very good book, so yeah. Um, other books I'm spoiling. The Circular Staircase, so also good book. Again, if you want to read it, don't watch this video. I mean, you can still read it after knowing the spoilers, but still good. Also, also, uh, Beloved. So, amazing writing. Toni Morrison is an amazing, amazing writer. It's a really intense book, though. I don't... I don't exactly spoil it, though. So, yeah, if you want to read um, Toni Morrison's book, then you're fine. You're fine. It's it's mostly for, for Rebecca, which is a great book, and I spoil very, very much. So, you have been warned. Um, other than that, I hope that you will enjoy the video. It is different and it was a lot of fun. And yeah, make sure to let me know what you think. Okay, on to the video. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Literary use of surprise, suspense, and the proper plot twist. Unfortunately, I'm that person at the movie theater. The one who sits through the first 10 minutes of a movie and goes, I bet the father was dead all along. Sure enough, an hour later, we get the big reveal. The father was dead all along. When someone reads and writes enough, certain plots begin to look familiar, and deductions on where they're going become simpler to see coming. Due to this fact, I personally relish the feeling of utter surprise in any story, especially when they're written. Gothic fiction is unique in the fact that it utilizes suspense, fear, unease, and even revelations just as much as a scary movie might. My plan is to break down how good writers accomplish good surprise, or plot twists, in gothic fiction. Film and television have recognizable and effective ways of causing suspense and eventual surprise in their audience. We might hear some dramatic music, see a darkening hallway with flickering lights, the music may begin to build until we're on the edge of our seat. And then, hey! Surprise! However, books tend to come without the same two elements that this essay must include. Sound and illustrations. 
So, if go-to methods like jump scares or faded reveals are taken from gothic fiction writers, how do they manage to work surprise into their narratives? It's true that in books such as The Circular Staircase, the point isn't really to figure out what happened, but to go on the journey the narrator is taking us on. However, the mind will inevitably begin to theorize when presented with a mystery, so it's up to the writer to allow the mind to wander while they construct their narrative. In Story Spoilers Don't Spoil Stories by Jonathan D. Leavitt and Nicholas J. S. Christenfield, a study is conducted to see how knowing spoilers affected the enjoyment of a story. They found that spoilers aren't as important as we think, as readers will often go back and reread their favorite books despite knowing what will happen, extracting equal or even greater enjoyment than the first time around. Similarly, it can be said that a good story should not rely solely on a revelation. The narrative should show high quality by itself, both in leading up to and following a plot twist. This additionally supports books where, as was the case with The Circular Staircase, if the surprise fails to land well, the story will not suffer greatly. We are told towards the end that John Bailey was Alex, the gardener, all along. A fact that comes out of the blue and, while tying up loose ends, adds little to the flesh of the narrative. It's revealed that because he shaved his ghastly mustache, the narrator found him unrecognizable, which unfortunately required some Clark Kent type of suspension of disbelief. The main problem is that the reader didn't possess all the information necessary to make this deduction. We knew John Bailey had a terrible mustache and that no one had seen him for some time, but we also knew that Rachel had looked at his face in detail, and it was reasonable to assume that she'd recognize a man whose voice she'd heard and face she'd described. Thus, the surprise feels as if it's coming out of the author's sleeve instead of the natural result of the narrative. It is a plot trick as Mary Lore Ryan calls it in her article, Cheap Plot Tricks, Plot Holes, and Narrative Design. A plot trick is distinct from a plot twist in that it's poorly set up and feels forced, as if it's coming from a bag of tricks. Ryan describes plot as existing in two levels. One is the plot of the author, who views the length of the storyline and has certain goals, and the other is the plot of the characters, who don't know what's going to happen and will have goals of their own. Often, these two sets of goals will be at odds, and if the author focuses on the goal of creating a certain reaction in the reader while defying narrative logic, we get a deficit in our story. Rebecca presents a surprise that checks all the boxes for a proper plot twist. We discover that despite our narrator's worries that her husband still loves his late wife, he not only despised her, but murdered her. This, while mind-blowing, was intricately set up throughout the entire book. Maxim's behavior, Mrs. De Winter's anxieties, the tension surrounding the character of Rebecca, all built towards this moment. In fact, the narrator, as well as several readers, I'm sure, was hoping for something like this. We wanted desperately for the relationship to work, and we realized that if Rebecca really was as good as the rumor said then a happy marriage was all but impossible. The writer ties us so closely to the narrator that I found myself echoing that guilty relief at a murder confession. What Daphne du Maurier excels at is providing a climax that emerged naturally from the situation she created. She had no need to toss in a trick to make the shock happen. It snowballed from the very beginning. She built a formula of characters that inevitably led to this conclusion. Better yet, the clues were all there. The best surprises are the riskiest ones, the ones a reader could plausibly put together before the author wants them to. A necessary conclusion to this idea is that gothic fiction does not have any sort of disadvantage in the category of fear, suspense, and surprise. We need only glance at beloved Toni Morrison's masterpiece to be utterly certain that fear can translate well from a page into the mind of a reader. The use of original tactics, such as demonstrating the growing unease and obsession of the characters, allows the haunt to peel off the pages and encourages us to sleep with the lights on. Thank you.